Welcome back to the 2020 World Series of Poker main event, day two of the international flight. 179 players virtually bag chips from an online field of 674. Hello, everybody. Lon McCarran, socially distanced from my broadcast partner, Jamie Kerstetter, by about 520 miles. Now, we could have been in the same room for COVID guidelines, uh, but I have yet to receive an invite to her house. <laughs> Sorry, Lon. It's nothing personal. I just have a strict dog only policy. <laughs> okay. I'll try not to be offended. Uh, but Jamie, this hybrid online slash live to be tournament presents a unique challenge to the players. It's still a 10K buy-in. It's still the main event. But instead of two-hour levels, they play 30-minute rounds. Plus, they're not in the Amazon room in Vegas, which automatically grabs your full attention and gets your blood pumping like uh, nowhere else. And especially now with the money bubble and the final table, golden carrots uh, hanging out there. How does someone keep their full attention on the prize just sitting at home? Well, I think it's crucial to recreate the feel of the real main event at the Rio. So I order a $7 banana. I <laughs> cool my room down to a 52 degrees, very comfortable. And I pay 20 guys to stand in line outside my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all joking aside, the money is so huge and the glory is so real that it's not that hard to focus um, whether you're wearing pants or not. To each his own. And yes, it's Jamie mentioned the money is huge, almost $1.6 million up top, plus an additional million for the winner of the Heads Up Championship versus the Las Vegas Flight Final Table winner. Of course, the World Series main event bracelet and the title world champion. All right, let's take a look at some of the day two international action on ggpoker.com to give you an idea how our final nine advanced. Okay, we'll start with a blind uh, against blind battle. In the small blind Canadian pro Daniel DeVoris with Ace Five suited, nine big blinds. And of course, Daniel's going to open shove into the bigger stack of Lithuanian uh, Domenico Michalaitis, the chess loving poker player, or maybe the poker loving chess player. Anyway, with Ace King suited, he's not going anywhere, Jamie. Is he knit rolling one of the nicest guys in the game? I think this should get punished. I, I think we need a five oh. of justice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so all in, ace five versus ace king. Devoris is at risk. A king and the flop. And Devoris ready to go watch highlights of his summer bracelet win. <laughs> On to the next. When it was the turn of Damien Salas in the cutoff, the action had already been raised. Salas held eight, six suited. What's to think about here, Jamie? Well, I think what he's going to go for here is putting pressure on some of these shorter stacks approaching the bubble. They're only seven away from the money right now. Uh, one problem he might have, though, is he, if he decides to three bet this hand, look at the Raise. three stacks yet to act. He's going to have to call off against all of them. So it's a bit of a dicey play without holding any blockers um, and with it being about half of his stack to call off. Yeah, he raised right into the kings of Robin Hegeli, a German pro who finished 27th in the 2017 main event. Again, delayed reaction from Robin. Yeah, I think uh, Robin knows he's going with this hand, but is just taking his time right now. Um, probably just trying not to give off any timing tells for the future. Yeah, but he's not going anywhere. Robin Hegley with just 213,000 in the stack. Oh. On the button, and there is all in. So one blind folds, the other blind, uh, again, deciding exactly when to fold. Yeah, it's not a question of if. Back around to the original Razor with Ace-10. Yeah, and this is going to hit the muck. This is nowhere near strong enough. Um, but uh, you see Salas right now doing a little math in his head, realizing he is priced in to call with any two here. Even giving Robin a range of jacks plus here, he's still getting the right price to call, which is why I didn't really like the three bet in the first place. Yeah, he really did paint himself in the corner. He was in no man's land uh, and just not figuring somebody after him to wake up with such a big hand. But he, you got to pay attention to the stacks around you with that call. smaller stack they can shove. He does make the crying call. He's a four to one dog to the Kings. And there is a six now, just a three to one dog and an eight on the turn. And it's heavily looking for help. A slow peel on the river. No luck for Robin. His Kings go down in flames to the eight six. 
Oh, man. And Robin is 86 from the tournament right before the match. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. So how about this guy? Uh, he's going to begin the final table uh, as one of the big stacks, and he just keeps making money. Of course, he finished uh, at the final table in the 2017 main event. He won over 800 grand in September of 2020. I really like his style, Jamie. Now we find Manuel Ruivo of Portugal with pocket Rins. tens. He's going to open with a min raise. He's working with a big stack at the table behind him on the button with ace king off and just 18 big blinds is Jordan Nockstedt. Yeah, if you're Nockstedt here, you're just thrilled to wake up with ace king. With a somewhat All late in. position raise from a big stack, you know their range is going to be really wide and ace king rates will just dominate that. Um, with that in mind, it's a little more interesting for the small blind here on only 13 big blinds. Uh, I would go with ace queen here. It rates to be the best hand, but man, just a cooler situation. Yeah, with ace queen is Camille Godin, uh, both these players uh, oh, Canadian, on Canadian violence here. And there's another shove back to Manuel. Uh, tens moment for this tourney, Jamie, and I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> <laughs> fine um yeah tens tens is good enough to go with here you're, you're not oh. too thrilled with this either though with two people risking their tournament lives ahead of you so there is the call and a 10 and the flop oh my what a hand as it plays out for ruivo a boat on the turn secures the monster pot and the double knockout Manuel Alfonso Suarez Ruivo, who vaulted to second place at the time, and that's where he will start the final table with 6.2 million. Nachstedt and Godin each min cash the tune of just over $15,000. For Ruivo, this will be his third World Series of Poker final table, including finishing Bold. sixth in the 2018 Bold. Millionaire Maker. That one had over 7,300 entries, in. and I think he could be a real player to contend with at the final table, Jamie. Bold. Later on, we find 2017 bracelet winner Christopher Frank with King Jack and the Low Jack looking to hijack the hand. And he's going to push his 11 big blinds into the Rings. middle. He needs to get something going. Bold, but bold, Ramon bold. Munoz wakes up with ace queen suited. Yeah, this is just a great spot. Slam dunk, get it in, and just hope to hold. You're, you're dominating the range of the shover. And you just say, dealer, please, no king. Yeah, ace queen against king jack, and boom comes a queen on the flop, and slam goes the door on Frank, whose payday moment has arrived for over eighteen thousand. So he knows with over one point three million after that hand, he would end up taking three million to the final table, putting him in seventh place when the cards go in the air. He did cash in the twenty sixteen main event for seventeen grand. This upcoming payday will be his best ever. We move oh. on with the blinds up to 25 and 50K. Marco Strada has a small pocket pair and over a million big bully chips. And oh. with the pocket fours, he's going to put in a min raise plus a little value added tax. Two to his left, you'll see Julian Menhart. He's got two big blinds. The day 1A chip leader had begun the previous hand with almost a million five. But despite flopping a set of jacks, he was raise. cut down by Ace King flopping Broadway. Yeah, that is just brutal. Don't you hate pocket jacks? Uh, yeah, who doesn't hate oh. pocket jacks? <laughs> so Strata now putting pressure on Julian, and uh, he really has nowhere else to go with that ace, I'd imagine. You know, he's got to shove it all in. Yeah, it's Julian's all chance in. to triple up. Um, perhaps Bold. doubting he'll find a better hand or a better spot before Bold. blinding Bold. himself into oblivion. So a piddling 26K more. And Stratus says, I want to call. He's going to call. He's just having fun right there. So Julian at risk with his ace-seven against the pocket pair. The flop is no ace, no seven, another ten. More outs for Julian as we go to the river. The river is a blank, but it's still a bang-bang exit for Julian Menhart out and 24th place. Marco Strata keeps his role going. He will take 4.2 million chips to the final table. Good for fourth place. Strata had a nice time building his stack on day one of 247,000. Kind of a mystery man earlier. Weren't quite sure who he was. He finally fessed up and uh, gave us uh, a picture and his name. That was nice. Down to two tables now. And we look at Diego Zider on the button. King Jack of clubs. It's been folded to him. He has less than half the chip average at this Wait. point, Jamie. Yeah, and let's see if he's oh. going to jam it in here, which I probably probably would do with a 5k money bubble but no he is going to min raise and maybe induce some loose action from hands he dominates i think maybe queen jack would put it in here king 10 
Um, so I, I like Colin. where his head's at. He's definitely not scared of me. And the big blind, Stoyan Obreshkov with a bigger stack, a bigger hand, and he does go all on putting pressure on Diego. And Zyder here, I doubt he was trying to raise this hand to fold it. It's just such a good hand on the button. And, you know, I think he's going to end up racing for all these chips. All in. Yeah, 5K money bubble. I guess he doesn't mind that. He's here to win it. So King Jack with two overs looking for help. It's not awful. Diego adds a couple of outs. The seven is no help. And now the river. And... <laughs> the three spotter is indeed another Trey Zider out in 18th. Oh, Breshkov jumped to almost two and a half million there with the final table average stack at about five million. He will begin as a short stack with 2.1 million. He was one of the shorter stacks after day one, bagging just 84,000 chips. Uh, but he found a way to make the final table. You've got to feel good about that. 13 remaining now, Austrian Chris Poots with a seven. Thinking about this, I guess he's got a little trouble with commitment, Jamie? Rings. Yeah, this is where we're going to insert that Norman Chad ex-wife joke. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, Hans Bold. Spicer will solve that problem, holding ace Bold. jack suited. Uh, and he pushes all in back to Poots. Will he step off the ledge or not? Of course he will. <laughs> he knows he's probably behind after what Hans just did but 120,000 behind. He is all, all in. in and at risk. Spicer with a bigger hand, an ace for both in the flop. S still seeking a seven is Chris. Extra sweat on the final card with that five. Another five on the end. And Chris Poots falls in 13th place. Spicer collects a nice chunk. He'll be seated at the final table with three and a half million chips in fifth place to start. Spicer made a final table during the GG Poker World Series Summer Series, uh, but he has flown under the radar for the most part. The action became frantic and furious. It seemed to be a rush hour yes. and all ends here with 11 left, a clash of big aces. Prodigal all Sin in. raises with ace queen into the ace king. Yeah, this is one of those hands that just plays itself. You're five-handed. You have ace-queen. You expect to be good almost all the time, and just running into a bigger ace is very unfortunate. Bold. And lucky for you and me, Jamie, the hand doesn't announce itself. We do have <laughs> bills to pay. So with ace-king, China's Peiwan Sun, his 12 big blinds go into the auction pit. He'd been running low on fuel for a while, now facing his moment of bold, truth. Bold. So fold it back around to... VJ Aratnam, ace king ahead, but there is a queen in the flop and ace on the turn. So Sun looking for some help on the river. We love the four. Oh, it is going to be a 10 on the end and a double up and a spot at the final table for Paywon Sun. Unfortunately, he announced to the world that uh, due to COVID concerns, he would not be making the trip to Razvedov, Czech Republic for that final table. So by rule, Sun will receive ninth place money for just over $75,000. I'm sure he's disappointed, but safety first these days. Good to hear he's doing what he thinks is right. Good luck in the future. A wild closing stretch, oh. which saw two double ups by Bruno Beton, oh. three for both Strata and Michaelitis, oh. one each for Sen and Sun, kept us at 11 players for a while until Prodigal Sen and the Big Blind saw a seven. He was facing only a min raise from Botan, who was dealt pocket queens. Wow, this is oh. a huge risk at this point in the tournament. Sen Theron just picks a dicey spell with just a seven to try for the pre-flop steal and sees he's in terrible shape. But somewhere in the world, Joseph Chong is nodding in approval. <laughs> so Prodigal Sin knocked out in 11th place, and that will send him into the night. Botan picked up that massive pot. He will be the chip leader at the final table with 10.3 million. Thomas McDonald bobbled the final table, picked up over 50 grand for his nice run. So Bruno regarded as one of the top online players in the world. Five, six figure scores in 2020. The chip lead, he has to be the favorite. Players in New Jersey and Nevada were able to join in the fun, playing a U.S. main event flight on WSOP.com. A single starting day saw 705 players enter. So together with the 674 on ggpoker.com, the total field size was 1,379 players. 
Yeah, it's just a huge field. Nice turnout. And a lot of notable players enter the U.S. Facing Tournament. 2013 WSOP Main Event Champ Ryan Reese, Daniel Negreanu, Nick Schulman, Maria Ho, Jason Somerville, Mohsen Charania, Scott Siever, and old school favorite Freddie Deeb, who happened to finish among the 107 who cashed. All right, let's take a look at the nine survivors who are scheduled to play their final table live at the Rio on December 28th. So the final table, each player guaranteed almost $99,000 top prize. Again, nearly 1.6 million bucks. The winner will play our GG Poker International Flight winner heads up for a chance at a million dollars and the world championship title. Yeah, and that's not the only person who's going to win a million dollars. Second place is paying a million dollars as well. This is just huge for the U.S. facing part of the tournament. Um, I would keep an eye on Pesh Da Silva. He is just a really solid player. He always gets it done. Um, I'm looking at his 13 big blinds, and if I was playing at this final table, I would be praying against a double up from Pesh. And you see everyone's got a uh, an uphill climb against Joseph Hebert who is uh, quite the circuit player down in southern United States, lives down in Louisiana. 13 million chips does our chip leader have. Second place, Sean Stroke, with just over 5 million. So everyone has their work cut out for them. As mentioned, GTPoker.com ambassador Daniel Negrano took part in the U.S. flight of this main event. Daniel did come up short of the money, but still found the experience to be unique. And he told us that he was glad to be part of it. All right, not gonna lie, you know, this year I did miss grinding it out at the Rio every day, playing for bracelets, and of course the World Series of Poker main event. So it was pretty special and pretty cool to be able to, you know, play a version of it. I mean, it's kind of historic where we have a hybrid where you, you know, qualify online and uh, eventually play it out, you know, for real. And unfortunately I didn't make it all the way, but I did enjoy sort of the comfort of being, you know, in my underwear during the entire tournament, uh, playing from my couch. And um, I was able to make a pretty deep run. I made the money. I was like 92nd place. I think I folded the last, or I didn't, I, the last 41 hands I didn't win a pot and ultimately went down when I had just like two big blinds. But it was a fun experience. I mean, it it wasn't like the same as playing live, but it had that feel and it has that special allure. I mean, anytime you're playing for bracelets, it's a big deal. And when one is dubbed, the World Series of Poker main event, you bet you're gonna see all the big heavy hitters come out to play that. So for me, it was just pretty awesome to have the opportunity to play in a main event. And let, you know, next year, I hope to do it on uh, the green felt in real life. The virtual Railbirds are always active during online events, as we have found out. Let's take a look at who has entertained us. And uh, Brazil, very proud of their man Bruno taking the chip lead to this final table, Jamie. Oh, it's got to be so exciting. He has such a great chance to win, being the number one ranked Brazilian pro and with such a nice stack. And so many good Brazilian online players. And to expand that, we've got two South Americans, both Bruno and Damon Salas, going to this final table. And a tweet from Maria Ho, an accomplished pro, played 16 hours over two days in the WSOP.com event, finished in 22nd place out of the 705 entries. Another good finish for Maria. Yeah, and I like her strategy of saving her final table for when she can get her rail. She's got one million friends. <laughs> they want to have some drinks, and I don't think it's quite as fun on Zoom. It's always nice to hear from the man, the math, the legend, Kev Math. Uh, not a real WSOP without a thousand tweets from this man. Um, so he just previews the final table coming to King's Casino December 15th with 1.5 million up top. He's a guy you got to think about Poker Hall of Fame one day, right? I mean, what he does for the game is amazing. He lives and breathes this game. Um, and for a while, he was doing it thanklessly. I think finally people realized the value of Kev Math, and he's getting his due. Who doesn't love Kev Math? World Series of Poker Vice President Jack Effel has had his hands full the last few months trying to find a way to pull off this main event. Now, our crew tracked down the busy man to get his thoughts on where this new and hopefully temporary iteration of the World Series of Poker stands right now. 
Hi, I'm Jack Effel. I'm the Vice President of the World Series of Poker. I oversee the operations of the World Series of Poker. What makes this year special more so than anything else? I mean, obviously we've we've been in the middle of a pandemic for the last you know, nine months and we've been you know very fortunate to continue to deliver a, a product to our players through our online platform, WSP.com, our partners, GG Poker. We've been able to award 85 bracelets thus far. Every sporting uh, league out there found a way to play their, their their sporting season to host their games, you know, whether it was in closed environments, without fans, or with a limited amount of fans, or limited amount of games, or, you know, a change in format, or, and we found a way to, to make it work. And, you know, since 1970, the World Series of Poker has been able to crown a world champion. And, we wanted to ensure that that was the case in 2020 as well. It's going to take place at the Rio for the final nine and the heads up match on December 28th and 30th. Everyone is going to be tested. The players are going to be tested twice uh, before they play each day. That was put together in order to be able to, you know, play this event very, very safely and sanitarily is as safe as possible. I feel very, very good about what we're all getting ready to experience. It's going to be exciting. Jamie, I know there has been some pushback from players. Yeah, big red alert, pushback from poker players uh, in doing the World Series this way. But I also know that Jack Effel and everybody that works at the World Series of Poker really want a normal World Series of Poker. Who doesn't? The bottom line is that this iteration gave poker to people as best they could bring it to them, no? For sure. It's just the poker player way to resist all change uh, and just be you know, upset about stuff. And then slowly we take it in and realize we do want this event. There's tons of players. we got over a thousand players who wanted to play this. Um, and, and you know, it. the fans are doing the best they can in one of the worst years of our lives um, to bring us something that we all want. And I think they did a great job. All right, that's going to do it for this show. Next time we will have the live final table from Roz Vidoff, Czech Republic, King's Casino, eight players seeking big money and a chance to go to Vegas and play for a main event bracelet and another million dollars on top of it all, Jamie. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, if a couple million wasn't enough, they're just going to add a million to it. Um, it. This has been really fun to cover. I, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it, and um, I can't wait to see how it plays out. Absolutely. She's Jamie Kerstetter. I'm Lon McCarran. Keep an eye on our social media and that of GG Poker uh, to learn when our next show will be coming your way. Thanks for watching. See you soon for more coverage of the World Series of Poker.